Hi, this is Jeff Van West for IFR Magazine and AvWeb. Today we're going to fly some NDB approaches in a Cirrus SR-22 that doesn't have an ADF. We're going to use the GPS instead. In the clouds? No. But it's still something you can do for proficiency, a good mental exercise when you turn off all the moving maps. Here's how it works. We're going to use GPS number 2 in this Cirrus, so if you have it set for automatic cross-fill, you'll want to go to the AUX pages and change that to manual. Next, go to GPS 2 and put in the identifier for the beacon, Sierra Zulu Oscar in this case, the Sebago NDB. Ensure there's no CDI by using navigation from GPS 1 or a non-existent VOR. Then get a bearing pointer for GPS 2. That's the second bezel key on this Avidyne Integra. It's a PFD soft key on the G1000. Once in the air, turn direct to the beacon using the bearing pointer. Note the bearing you're on and stay on that bearing as needed wow. using whatever corrections you need to account for the wind. This means the bearing pointer will be deflected left or right of the nose depending on which way the wind is coming from. You can use your heading bug to show you the heading that will keep you on the right bearing or to keep track of where the bearing needle should be pointed as you track toward the station. Once you get close to the station, things are going to happen fast. Cross over and enter a hold, even if it's a direct entry, just for the fun of it. Of course, through the whole maneuver, make sure your safety pilot's looking for traffic. When you're on a bearing that's 90 degrees off to the inbound course, that's the moment to start your timer for the outbound leg. No GPS distances here. We'll be doing it all by time. After a minute, turn around and re-intercept the bearing inbound to the station. Remember, if you're ever in doubt, turn to a heading that matches the course you're trying to fly inbound, the bearing you're trying to fly inbound, and see whether you've got needle deflection left or right, then correct. Crossing the station inbound, it's the old five T's. Start a timer. Turn to the inbound course if you're not already on it. Throttle for the descent. Tune any frequencies that need changing and talk to local traffic. Be sure to hold that ground speed as precisely as you can because you're determining the missed approach point by time alone. So how much more time do you have? Uh, it should be about a minute at this ground speed. When you hit your estimated time, look up. If you did it right, you'll be right over the missed approach point. If not, you'll be somewhere over the hills. Either way, start your missed approach with climb, clean, cool, and communicate and then it's back to the beacon to enter the hold. You don't need a fancy glass cockpit to do this either. You can do it with a portable GPS, although they're all a little different about how you'd execute it. With this Garmin 496, what you'd have to do is use the set OBS and hold function, and then put in manually the bearing you want to fly. You'll get a CDI for this, but you still have the challenge of not having a moving map and trying to stay on course with wind corrections. And the beauty is, you don't even need a working ADF. There is a practical application to all this, glass cockpit or not. Getting in the habit of using bearing pointers adds just one more angle on situational awareness when maneuvering for the airport or being vectored for the approach. So there you go, NDB approaches in a Cirrus and a Cessna using built-in avionics and a portable GPS. If you want to find out more about this kind of work, you can check out the January issue of IFR Magazine. I'm Jeff Van West for IFR Magazine and AppWeb. Thanks for watching.